we move on to do a full reaction to Real Madrid defeating Villarreal and then uh, we'll also discuss Danny Carvajal's injury good win for Real Madrid defeating Villarreal who before were you know were third place I believe in La Liga and they're you know they play some really really good football and uh and now for Real Madrid to defeat them 2-0, pretty comfortable victory with the opening goal coming early in the game for Real Madrid, which allowed them to settle down, to allow the crowd to get into it. And, yeah, uh, and, uh, and then, you know, oh, you know, an amazing goal from Vinicius, who I was a little bit critical over after that little game, you know. Um, wonderful goal to make it 2-0. And um, now... Um, you know, they found themselves level with points with Barcelona. Um, when they got that win, Barcelona went on to get that victory um, against Alaves uh, a day later, 3-0. So, so Barcelona right now are three points ahead of Real Madrid, nine games in, which, you know, you know for how mediocre Real Madrid has start has been, you know, um, dropping points in three different games, you know, they're still won six, they're draw three, they haven't lost a single game. So they they still find themselves within striking distance with Barcelona, only three points, which is which is not a lead at all. There was a point period where the you know, it was a four point lead already through four or five games. And you know, so it was good Real Madrid, they're being consistent. Uh, uh, you know, a little bit of luck early on in the fourteenth minute with the deflection. Um with a Valverde strike, um, and then another, and then, you know, and, uh, and yeah, it was a good win, it was a good win overall for Real Madrid, uh, I think, um, they've had a good response since they had that bad loss to Lille, um, that was a very, you know, that was a really, really good response, that 2-0 win, um, for that disappointment, for the negativity around Real Madrid, um, in the newspaper, there was some huge, huge negativity. I think it's a good way to settle it down. I think the Villa playing a team that you know, Villarreal, you know, that's a respectable win. There came at the right time with the pressure mounting, with the you know, with the criticism, for them to have their chance to you know get this result. Really good win. Now on the negatives, you know, we'll get to the da Danny Carvajal thing um, later on, uh, which is a bad loss. I think Kylian Mbappe was really poor, I do have to say. Really poor Kylian Mbappe. Uh, he was really, really bad, in my opinion. He looked like early La Liga, Real Madrid, and he's been pretty poor since he's returned from injury. Yes, he's playing through something right now. Um, he didn't have a single shot on goal. He wasn't lively in dangerous areas. He wasn't involved in play that much. He was, he was almost drifting. You know, he was he was almost drifting. wasn't really involved with play. Didn't really, you know, try to get too involved. Was a little bit isolated. Was a little bit distant. Was almost in his own world. And you know, maybe the injury has a little something to do with it as well. Returning a little bit earlier than maybe he needed. Maybe he was supposed to. But he, he was just not good enough. He was not involved, and you know, uh, you know, if you if you didn't, you know, you know, you you know, if you're watching the game as a neutral, you probably forgot Mbappe was even playing. You probably, you probably for you know didn't even for you know. He just didn't get involved, and you know they need to you know they need to. He needs to start developing some sort of consistency at Real Madrid, I do have to say. I think the performances in general for him has been inconsistent since the 2022 World Cup. That he had a pretty crappy Euros. I think he had a, you know, okay season at PSG. Did well in La Liga. I mean, in League One in terms of goals and assists numbers. But overall, had an okay, mediocre sort of season in uh, uh, last season at PSG. I think... Um, yeah, it's a little bit concerning. I thought overall in midfield, great. I thought Villarreal and Luka Modric played a really, really good game. I do have to say, uh, Luka Modric, that looked like the old Luka Modric. And yes, once in a while, he is capable of that. 
you know, he was able to pull the strings in the midfield. He was the composer. He dictated tempo. He was a good connector in midfield. And and he played a really, really good game. Frederico Valverde, one of the most underrated players in the world. You know, he got that opening goal through the deflection, of course. Um, but the, the amount of the um the amount of ground he covers, the amount of work he does, being able to drive the ball into attacking areas, and then all the covering he does, the running he does, the space that he covers, and then his ability to do the defensive dirty work as well. You know, get interceptions, do the dirty work in terms of getting the tackles in. You know, not being easy to play against. You know, he has that nature where he can control the ball and he can take the ball forward. Um, and he can and he can pass the ball, but he also has that defensive nature to him where he's willing to do the work and he has the ability to go up, join attack, and drop and do all that work and defend as well. He has the capacity, the lungs to do that. And then he's also giving you bangers as well. Uh, that's a boss man right there. Underrated, underrated player. You know, he's a sort of player. I'm surprised he hasn't had that huge, huge impact in the international tournament for Uruguay yet because he has that quality. And um, he has that ability as well. He's a, he's a brilliant, brilliant player. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, and, and by the way, you know, speaking of him, Uruguay, he confirmed Luis Suarez's points about Marcelo Bielsa. If y'all know a little bit of that was going on. Um, he's, you know, he went to a point he didn't exaggerate at any point. Wow, that's a crazy thing for Federico Valverde to say about his own, you know, manager. But that's that's a little bit off topic. But you know, we'll we'll probably get to that later on. Actually, we'll probably get that in the top headlines. We should we'll, we should get to that. But um, but yeah, what a player he is, Federico Valverde. I just want to tip my cap. He's a he's a great player. Um, what was the other talking point? Uh. Oh, Vinicius, I thought he played a pretty good game. He had that really good goal as well. I want to send my uh, respect to Danny Carvajal. You know, that, you know, uh, sad injury for Real Madrid. Danny Carvajal, that almost larger than life figure for them. The legend, you know, how many years they seen him play right back, you know. Now he's 32 years old. Um, you know, uh, on the aging end, he tearing his ACL. Um... And he suffered an LCL injury as well. Um, during the late in the Madrid 2 0 win, you could tell right away there was some issue. Um, you know, uh, you could tell um, that there was um, there was, that there was an that there was an issue with him. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a bad injury for Real Madrid. Because they don't have that much depth at right back, you know, with uh, Danny Carvajal going down, you know, you know, that's an issue, you know, there's a limited, there's limited depth in that position. And, and, and generally, historically, you know, in general, fullbacks over the last eight, nine years or so hasn't been the strongest part of Real Madrid's team, you know, with... Um, with the you know on both on both sides we know generally it's been Ferland Mendy and Danny Carvajal they're not the you know Danny Carvajal he's a really really good fullback um one of the more older school fullbacks um and he's a leader as well he'll do the defensive work and he'll show up in the big games you remember I still did a bit, that still that performance against Luis Diaz in that Champions League final. I mean, he was absolutely magnificent. He scored the goal in this past Champions League final against Borussia Dortmund to open the deadlock, that late winner, you know. And the fact that, you know, the only other replacement you have right now is Lucas Vasquez, who's not even a... That's not even his primary position. That's something he, he's going to be filling in um, with the, you know, with the transition he's had at Real Madrid. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's a that's a hole there that Real Madrid. Maybe they'll address it with in January with some temporary solution and loan or something of that sort to bring in someone temporarily. But um, uh, and also shout out to Real Madrid as well. They um they extended his contract immediately uh after I think it was um. Uh, uh, 
his existing contract was going to expire at the end of the season. But to support him, he's won six Champions Leagues in 11 years at Real Madrid. Um, they announced that, you know, they announced a new deal until the summer of 2026. Uh, the club announced. So, um, you know, you know that's a sense of respect. And, and that's really... Um, that's really a great thing for the club to do.